Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault. And once again, I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on a hot new pistol that was recently released here in 2024, just around SHOT Show. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the new Daniel Defense Daniel H9. Now this is a modernization of the old Hudson H9, which by the way, I absolutely loved when I did a range report on it. And in this video, I'm gonna show some side-by-side -side comparisons with this particular firearm. But I loved the Hudson H9, and I'm really excited to get this particular pistol to the range to see if Daniel Defense was able to copy all of the great things from that gun and modernize it and turn this into something I personally am going to want to have, own, and keep forever. Because as I mentioned, that Hudson H9 was a pretty darn sweet pistol. So before we get into all of the comparisons and talk about the things that I like and don't like about this particular gun, as always, I want to thank the people that make these videos possible. First and foremost is the owner of this really cool pistol. He's lent a bunch of guns to the channel. His name is Jack. He's a local fan and subscriber. In fact, he's the second person named Jack that lends guns to this channel. So I just affectionately call him Jack number two. So thank you again, Jack. It's an honor to get to shoot this pistol so soon after SHOT Show and it was released. I always want to thank my Patreon supporters because through their monthly donations and support, they help keep the lights on around here. I couldn't do this without them. And if you guys want to join my Patreon for as little as $1 a month and get to see all of these videos early, you can do it with a link in the description below. And as always, I want to thank my primary sponsor who always provides all of the ammunition for these range reports, thus making them financially feasible for me, my good friend Mark from Brownworks. And I know if you're watching this video, you like high-end firearms. Maybe you own a Colt 1911, a Beretta 92, a CZ-75, or a Browning High Power. Heck, you might even own a Hudson H9. And these even take wood panel grips. And so does the Daniel H9. And you've been thinking, it'd be really cool to have a set of customized wood grips, something with a custom logo, or an engraving, or something made out of an exotic wood for these really cool firearms. Well, I have the perfect company for you. Brownworks. Brownworks is a custom grip company making one-off customized grips one at a time. Mark is an artist. He's a craftsman. He can make grips out of exotic woods, laminate woods, even apply things like snake skin and alligator skin, as well as finish these grips in a wide variety of colors and a wide variety of textures. So I'm going to ask you guys to go over to his website. I'm going to put a link in the comments section below, as well as a coupon code for 10% off your first order. Please go over there and see what he has to offer. And if you don't find what you're looking for, make sure to contact Mark. His customer service is world class. And when you do contact him, please tell him the Texas Gun Vault sent you. So let's talk a little bit about what this firearm is all about. And I do want to compare it with the original Hudson H9. So here's the Daniel H9. Here's the Hudson H9. They share a lot of the same aesthetics, but it is my understanding that when Daniel Defense bought the patents for the Hudson H9, they only used two of them in the new pistol, and only a couple of parts are actually interchangeable between the two. So what I want to do now is adjust the camera. I want to give you guys some close-ups and kind of compare and contrast these two pistols and talk about their features. All right, so I wanted to show what this pistol is all about, talk about its features, but also compare it with the original Hudson H9. So I wanna go over the positive things first and the things I think people are really going to like. First off, on the Daniel H9, we do have an optics cut here on the top, which the original Hudson lacked, and I think that's just because so many more people today run red dots, and Daniel Defense really thought that would be a great upgrade, and I do agree with him. This gun does have a little bit of magazine compatibility with the older model, so the older magazines are long enough to fit into the Daniel H9, but unfortunately, because the grips are different length, the Daniel H9 mags will not work in the Hudson's. So you do have a little bit of magazine compatibility if you have the older Hudson mags. They are just going to stick out just a little bit further. 
Both of these guns are a modular design, just like a SIG P320, although they don't come apart as easy, but both of these guns have a trigger pack or a trigger mechanism, which can be removed, so maybe they'll have different frame options in the future. I also like the fact they kept the grip angle. One of the things I loved about the Hudson H9 is this feels like a 1911 grip in your hand. And although this grip is a little bit shorter, it still feels like a 1911. And I love the fact they kept the aesthetics. I think this is a very attractive gun and both the Daniel H9 and the Hudson H9 look absolutely fantastic. Now to talk about the things that they changed that I think are actually detriments to the pistol, many of them I think deal with the recoil of the gun. So on the original Hudson's, this is a steel frame. They were gonna come out with a compact frame and eventually one in aluminum. Daniel Defense went ahead and made the frame out of aluminum. So this gun is lighter. However, I think the whole point of the Hudson H9 was to have a very low recoiling firearm. And you can do a little bit of that with the weight. Because this is going to be lighter, I think it's gonna recoil just a little bit more. You also will notice that the front of the receiver is a little bit different on the Hudson. We have this big mass up here and that's because the recoil spring is really low in the frame and that's to give us an extremely low bore axis. We get the same bore axis in the Daniel H9, however the recoil spring is higher and so that might give us just a little bit more muzzle flip. This might be easier to manufacture However, I think we are going to lose some of that amazing recoil we got with the Hudson. And you'll also notice that the takedown of these two guns is different. On the Hudson, we have a lever right here which you have to push out through the right side and I am going to do a field strip video and comparison on both these pistols. The Daniel H9 has tabs and this comes apart very much like a Glock. And after trying to field strip this, I can tell you the Daniel H9 is definitely harder to field strip than the original. I find these tabs have to be pulled down in a very specific direction and my big old fat fingers kind of hurt when I pull down on those tabs. And I'm also a big fan of the original Hudson's size. I like this full length grip, although this more compact grip is perfectly fine and I'm sure they designed this more for concealed carry. I sure like the full length grip of the original Hudson and you can see it is longer. Let's see if I can get this in frame here. I know it's kind of hard to show, but the Hudson is a little bit longer. And I do think that's something that I prefer with the original over the new one. So that's mainly the big differences between these two guns. So now let's go talk about the things that I like and don't like about the Daniel H9. And so now that we've talked about the things that they kept the same, the things that they changed about these two pistols, let's talk about the Daniel H9 specifically and the things that I like and don't like. And I always want to start with the positive first. First off, this is a Daniel Defense. And I have always appreciated the quality of Daniel Defense firearms. I've shot a few of their AR-15s. I have a couple of them myself. And I have always been impressed with their manufacturing. And I can tell you from just holding this pistol it is manufactured to a very high degree. I'm very impressed by all the machining. I don't see any flaws in it. It looks absolutely beautiful. The finish on it looks great. And if it's anything like their other high-end AR-15s, this thing is going to be a great shooter and it's going to be high quality as well as a very durable firearm going forward. I'm also a big fan of the sights that they chose to put on this. I personally love fiber optic sights and they put a fiber optic sight on the front. We have a blacked out U in the back. If I can get that focused, might not be able to. There you go. So I actually do like these sights. I kind of prefer fiber optics actually a little bit more than the tritium night sights. I also like the fact they tried to retain the lower bore axis the best that they could from the Hudson H9. So even though this one might not be as low as the Hudson, it is still considerably lower than many other pistols on the market. 
And just like the original Hudson, I love the fact this gun is kind of a blend between a 1911 and a Glock. I really feel like if you're a Glock fanboy and you hate 1911s, well, this might ease you into a 1911. And if you're a 1911 fan and hate Glocks, well, this kind of gives you a modernization of the 1911 and it's kind of like a Glock. It kind of bridges those two worlds, and I really do like that. I also like this trigger. When I dry fire it here on the workbench, it feels pretty good, just like the original Hudson. So what I want to do once again is adjust the camera. I want to get out the lineman trigger pull weight gauge and just actually see what this trigger measures at and just kind of compare it to my thoughts on the original Hudson and if this trigger matches up. So I've mentioned the trigger in this Daniel H9 is really good and it feels very similar to the original Hudson H9. I did want to check it out with the Lineman trigger pull weight gauge here. So let's go ahead and drop the magazine, ensure there is no ammunition in it. Of course, safety check the firearm, ensure there's no ammunition in that. Looks like we are clear and safe. So let me go ahead and clear the averages on this gauge and let's get some measurements. So our first pull, Six pounds, 4.4 ounces. Six pounds, 9.0 ounces. Six pounds, 13.6 ounces. Six pounds, 9.5 ounces. And finally, six pounds, 9.9 .9 ounces, which gives us an average of six pounds, 9.3 ounces. Now, I know that kind of sounds like that trigger pull is heavy, but for me, it's actually pretty good. Normally, I would not want a trigger that heavy, but maybe because the trigger comes directly back into the frame, you can stage it really well, it doesn't feel as heavy as the gauge says it is. I really do like it. It has a short reset. For me, that actually feels really good and does not feel like six pounds, 9.3 ounces at all. So. I know what the gauge says, but it definitely feels lighter. I think it's a really, really good trigger. So that's all the data on this trigger. So let's get back to the rest of this range report. And as you can see, that trigger is a little bit heavy, but I'm telling you, you have to dry fire this thing to get the perspective that I'm getting, which is it's actually pretty good. It's a pretty smooth trigger that's predictable and doesn't feel as heavy as the gauge says it is. It feels pretty darn good. All right, so let's talk about a few things about this gun that I don't like. And I kind of talked about it in the introduction of this pistol when I compared it with the original Hudson. And that this gun, I think, is full of compromises. It's a cool idea. They took the original Hudson and said, hey, there's a few things we want to improve about it. But sometimes I wonder when gun companies do things, if they call them improvements, in actuality, they're just easier to manufacture. So one of the things they did was get rid of all of that mass and that really low recoil system in the original Hudson and put it much higher in this pistol. Now the whole thing about the Hudson was that it was an extremely low recoiling firearm from the weight of the steel frame to that recoil spring. And they've done away with both of that. This is an aluminum frame and that recoil spring is higher. Also, when you do take this gun apart, you can get the recoil spring out and it goes into the slide instead of the frame, like on the original Hudson. It just seems like this is gonna be a little bit easier to manufacture. But I think both of those things are compromises. And I understand the advantages of changing that. Getting the recoil spring out from the slide is a big plus when it comes to cleaning. It's less stuff you have to take out of the gun. And manufacturing this out of aluminum gives people what they wanted, a lighter Hudson H9. But the lighter gun is gonna recoil more. And for me, that just takes all of the novelty out of the original Hudson. 
a 9mm that virtually shot like a 22. The other thing that they did that I thought was a compromise is they shortened the grip. Now, personally, I loved the original. This thing feels like a 1911. In fact, I think it's about the same length as a 1911. They've shortened that grip, and I understand once again why they did that, because I think they want this to be a concealed carry pistol. That's why they lightened it up, why they shortened the grip, and of course, took off all that mass in the front. But then, once you take those things away, it's not as special as it originally was. All that stuff was designed to make this shoot like nothing else. And I think what they did was build a very high quality 9mm pistol with a low bore axis that just might not shoot as well as the original. I feel like there's a lot of compromises that might be going into this, but we're just gonna have to take this thing to the range and find out. So that's what I like and don't like about this particular pistol, just handling it here on the workbench. So now let's get it to the range and actually see how this pistol performs. So as always, I'm gonna start off by setting the target out at seven yards and putting one magazine through this. I wanna see if I have any failures. I have heard of a couple of other YouTube channels reviewing this and having failures. The owner of this pistol, Jack, also told me when he took it to the range, he had a weird problem with it in that it shot exceptionally low, especially at closer distances. So I don't know if I'm gonna have to compensate for that, but we're gonna find out. So here we go, seven yards, one magazine. These are my first shots. So let's get my first impressions. And so far, so good. It appears that the accuracy for me is pretty much on. I haven't had any failures to feed, failures to eject. It's running like a top. And the gun has very little muzzle flip. It definitely has less recoil than your standard 9mm semi-automatic pistol. However, I don't think it shoots as nice as the original Hudson. And I know some of you guys are going to say, Jason, you're a little bit biased. But I have recently reviewed this gun and now shooting this one. And I have a pretty darn good memory of how much I loved this one. So while this is definitely a lower recoiling firearm, I just don't think it's as low as the Hudson, but it's definitely a huge improvement over many other 9mm pistols. All right, so now let's double the distance of this target. I'm curious if this group is going to open up or maybe it's going to start shooting low like Jack said it was for him. So here we go, another magazine target at a further distance, and let's see if I discover anything else about this pistol that I like or don't like, and I'll report back to you. And at about 15 yards, that group actually opened up a lot more than what I was expecting it would. I started to notice that the bullets were impacting the target really low. Now, somebody in the comment section over on the Texas Gun Vault 2 when I was talking about this gun said, well, they sight these things in for 25 yards, but I don't know if that's why this thing is shooting so low. I would think at 15 yards, it should be pretty much on. But once I realized where those bullets were impacting the target, I kind of walked 
clocked it up a little bit, but the pattern opened up a lot more than I really wanted it to. I will say the grip angle of this is exceptionally comfortable. Man, if you like 1911s, you're gonna like the grip on this particular gun. All right, so speaking about shooting this at 25 yards, I'm now gonna set out the target as far as I can at this indoor range, about 20 or 25 yards, and I'm going to bench rest this and hopefully take as much of the human element out of this as possible. So here we go, another magazine, me shooting from a barrier or a bench, and just seeing the best group that I can shoot this with at 25 yards. And like the previous test, those rounds were hitting the target really, really low, and I had to walk that up to the center, and that's why that grouping looks absolutely horrible. Now, I know some of you guys are gonna say in the comments, Jason, you're a terrible shot. You should never review guns. Well, remember, I'm just an average gun guy, but I can see what's happening with the impacts on the target. They are really, really low. I don't know why it is. And I was trying to at first shoot for the center of that target. And then by the end, I was having to shoot for the head just to get it in the center. So for me, there's something off with these sights. And unfortunately, there's no adjustments on them. Nothing that you can do without a tool, but definitely nothing for elevation. You can do some windage because these are dovetailed, but that's about all you can do. So I don't know what's up with that. Maybe there's a different front sight that we could install that could fix this. But so far, honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed with the accuracy. But I do like the recoil and it's not giving me any function issues. All right, so the next test I want to do is the hollow point test. I did mention that this is a pistol that I think they are marketing for concealed carry. And obviously, having a gun that's going to shoot hollow points reliably is something that's going to be really important to most consumers. And I don't think this is going to have any issues, but it's always worth testing. So here we go. Let's do a hollow point test. I'm going to load up one of the magazines with hollow points and just see if I have any of these failures to feeds or failures to check that other YouTube channels are claiming they're having. So here we go. Let's shoot some hollow points through it. Nice grouping to the right. Nice. Nice. So if I just, uh, you have that, you have that. And as expected, this pistol is running great. No failures at all. The grouping was really good at this shorter distance, and hollow points don't seem to affect the reliability of this gun whatsoever, so it's exactly as I was expecting from a gun from Daniel Defense.
All right, so the next test I want to do is give my wife Becky a chance to shoot this. Since this gun is designed for concealed carry, it's actually about the size of a Glock 19, and a Glock 19 is my wife's favorite pistol. So I'm curious if she's going to like this. I know she likes 9mm and ones that recoil pretty low. So let me load up another magazine and give my wife a chance to shoot this and see if from her perspective there's anything about this pistol that she likes or doesn't like that maybe I don't notice as the type of shooter that I am. And although she didn't shoot it as well as she was hoping, she said she did notice a reduction in recoil as compared to a Glock 19. The only thing she said that she did not like, and of course you guys know if you follow my channel, I always say that she's grip sensitive. She kind of has soft, delicate hands. And anytime a gun has any type of aggressive texture, whether that be on the grips, the front strap, or the back strap, she kind of complains. And the only thing she complained about was the back strap. And she said that was just a little bit too aggressive for her. They're a little bit too deep. Didn't have a problem with the front strap or the grips. But that back strap was a little bit too aggressive for her. But it wasn't too bad. But she did notice it and did comment on it. So I definitely wanted to bring that to your attention. Especially if you are also grip sensitive. And you might be a female shooter and that's something that you care about. Alright, so the next test and the last test I want to do is the quick magazine change test. I want to shoot this gun as fast as I possibly can. And I want to see if I can change this magazine out and just generally see if this is a naturally pointing firearm. So I'm not even going to use the sight. So I'm thinking to myself, if I was going to use this gun in a self-defense scenario, how would I use it? I do not claim to be some type of tactical operator. And statistically, if you're ever in a gunfight, you're only going to fire three shots at a distance of about seven feet. That's what the FBI says. So if I put two magazines through this as fast as I can and point shoot it at about six or seven yards, I think I'll get adequate results and enough data to see, is this a good firearm for me for self-defense when I know my adrenaline would be pumping? So here we go, a quick magazine change test, and let's see if I can shoot this gun quickly. And even though this trigger is over six and a half pounds, I can shoot this thing pretty darn fast. I can also get that magazine to drop out of there really, really fast. And this gun does exactly what I want a magazine to do. You push that to that button and it just falls right out of there. It just shoots right out of the bottom of that gun. You can get your next mag, get it in there and get this gun back in action. It's also a very naturally pointing firearm. I think this is a fantastic gun for concealed carry. It's definitely a better gun for CCW than the original Hudson. So I do like the fact they did change a few things. I kind of wish that they would offer both models, however. And who knows, maybe that's something that Daniel Defense plans on doing in the future. They just started with a more compact, lighter version, and maybe one day, because this is a modular design, you'll be able to buy something closer to what the original Hudson was. But that may be only a hope on my part. So what are my final thoughts on the Daniel H9, the new and improved Hudson H9. Well, I can tell you this is a very, very high quality pistol. It feels solid. 
However, I am a little bit disappointed with the overall accuracy of this gun, and I do feel when it comes to the novelty and the innovation of the original Hudson, I think they made too many compromises. When I heard this gun was announced, I was really hoping it was going to be something like the original. And I really feel like this is too much of a departure. As cool as it is, after shooting it, I don't think I'm as interested in it as I initially was. If it was something closer to the Hudson, I definitely would be, because this is different than most. This to me is a compromise. It's still good. I think many of you will still like it. And I don't know, maybe one day I would get one if they had a few different options. Maybe if they had the larger frame, if it had a steel frame. Maybe, but that's just my personal thoughts and opinions. It's still a good gun, and I would recommend that other people try it out. You might like it, but I would say try it before you buy it. And if you're a fan of the Hudson H9, I think you actually might be a little bit disappointed in this gun. But if you've never shot the Hudson, you're probably gonna absolutely love this gun. So I'm curious if any of you guys have shot this, and I hope you guys tell me in the comments section below what your thoughts are. But on my star system, what am I going to give the Daniel H9? Well, this might disappoint some people. I'm only going to give it three stars out of five. It's high quality, but its accuracy for me is just not there, and I think it has too many compromises. But you guys will have to tell me in the comments section below if you guys think I got that wrong. But three out of five stars, it's an average review for a very high quality gun from a great gun company. Daniel Defense is awesome. So what do you guys think? You guys own one of these? You guys want one of these? Have you shot one of these? And do my experiences with this particular pistol mirror yours? I would love to know. So tell me in that comment section. But three out of five stars for the Daniel Defense H9. So, as always, thanks for watching.